Thank you. Uh, that's going to be a little bit of a tough act to follow because I am just going to be talking about software infrastructure, much less exciting than, uh, you know, pretending you're going to Mars and the moon. But so what I'll be talking about is how uh, ascending node technologies can support your mission proposal concepts with uh, our team and our product that we're bringing out called Spaceline. And very recently, we've become what's called a AWS qualified business partner. So AWS has audited what we're up to, made sure we're using their infrastructure correctly, and has given us a stamp of approval that you uh, can rely on us to not turn off your servers. So who are we? Uh, myself, Carl and Sanford Selznick, we met on the OSIRIS-REx project. Sanford was working as the lead science data processor, um, and so building out the science ground data system. Carl was the chief astronomer on the mission in charge of the astronomy and photometry working group and was responsible for observing Bainu as we came up and resolved it from a uh, single point into a planetary surface and also discovered all of those pesky little particles we had to worry about there. And I was responsible for uh, driving things with SDK and GMAT and tools like that on the mission planning side. And throughout the mission, we would uh, go out to lunch and kind of commiserate on what pieces of the software weren't talking to each other because we all had siloed expertise uh, between the different pieces of science, data processing, operations planning and the silos were working but the communicating data from one silo into the next in that pipeline uh usually worked but it could be better there are moments that were headaches things just weren't lining up correctly so after several uh lunches spanning the uh two years of osiris rex's proximity operations at asteroid Bainu, we came up with an idea we called spaceline uh, Spaceline uh, is going to tackle these three core uh, silos we saw between kernel management. So these are the SPICE NAFE kernels that uh, encode where the spacecraft is, how the spacecraft is looking, what instruments are attached to the spacecraft, and how, does all those, how do all those data play with each other to describe your mission uh, geometry as a function of time. Uh, and so in that category, we're looking at just answering a lot of questions that required people to download the kernels, download the NAFE utilities, uh, run these C program command line utilities, uh, and then go and read documentation from the folks at NAFE for a few hours before realizing what the output actually means and how to ask the question that they meant to ask with those tools. Scenario interaction is taking all of that and coming up with a 3D visualization. That's not new technology. We've had that in things like STK and GMAT forever. I was using STK. And so usually I would have uh, like Bill Boynton or other science team members come into my office and be like, what's the spacecraft doing right here? Pointing at my monitors. Cause I was the only, STK is an extremely expensive tool. You only get one, we only had one or two seats of license for it, and no one really knew how to use it. So it became a bit of a choke point, right? And then we're going to introduce image simulation uh, of uh, once you have all this data, you should be able to say, oh, this is what Polycam or Mapcam would see at this point in time based off of uh, this telemetry data, right? And then the real breakthrough here is all of this is living on a website and is accessible via an API. So that purple bar in the bottom touching the three different silos. And with that, there's no longer an STK program or a C program you have to install on your computer and go in and set up your uh, dynamic libraries and set everything up to work. You just make an API call out to our server and we will give you back the response. So Spaceline has been funded under a uh, series of NASA SIBR or Small Business Innovation Research Grants. Uh, and there have been three of these between uh, a phase one and a phase two uh, to kind of uh, what we called Spaceline baseline of just, can we upload kernels? Can we use SPICE on this server? Uh, is everything working? 
spaceline science? Can we start to implement other stuff into here, say gravity models, atmosphere models, et cetera, and start to bring in multiple streams of data into one system that is still easy to access uh, and is responsive in this server architecture. And now we're working on spaceline operations. So not only can we bring, say, attitude profiles through C kernels from external sources into the tool, but can we create those attitude plans? Can I go and create the uh, detailed survey scan pattern for Osiris Rex directly in this tool without needing to install anything locally? Uh, and then just take a hyperlink and share it to my teammates and go, this is the observation I'm proposing. What do you think of that? And continuing the pipeline. So on the kernel management, uh, these are those uh, pesky NAFE uh, spice kernels. Uh, usually on a mission, what uh, we saw on OSIRIS-REx is folks would upload these from different institutions. Uh, the flight dynamics team has their own set of kernels. Lockheed Martin or whoever might build the vehicle might have their own. And then the, uh, a distributed science team might have different shape models for a target asteroid, for example, all of the different instrument kernels coming from different working groups. And what happens very quickly is there's all of a sudden different silos, different uh, hard drives that are mounted in different locations with all these disks, with all these kernels that might not line up exactly. A kernel might be called one thing he here and have the same exact content, but be a totally different name or the much more dangerous, uh, totally different content, but they're both called my camera V0. Dot, uh, TK on both of these systems. By centralizing this in a web-based architecture, we're going to bring everything in. We're going to be checking for collisions constantly to make sure that if you try to upload a kernel that already exists, we'll let you know and tell you, you either need to rename your kernel or talk to your uh, team to understand why this already exists and what uh, you think, how you think this kernel should fit into the system. And one question that came up a lot was on uh, this little graphic on the right is the gaps in uh, your attitude or your trajectory data. Uh, when the data is coming from the spacecraft th down through the dish, there will be gaps in the data of uh, just for some reason, the header data is missing in these times. Usually what was happening was folks would then have to download the kernels, go into the CK brief utility from uh, NAFE and figure out and then go and read this text response of like where the gaps are. Instead, we're just going to analyze that directly in the server. So this is going to reduce any uncertainties of why uh, does my data not work the way I think it does. You'll be presented for every kernel uh, exactly what its contents are. Uh, without any guesswork, without having to install anything locally. And because we have that, you can also analyze the kernels directly. So what we uh, show here is uh, doing a query on what is the distance from Earth to Mars uh, at, in ephemeris time of zero, so uh, January 1st of the year 2000. And what you see on the right is out of this query, you can build out a report or a chart and so without downloading any data, we're showing here uh, the different XYZ components of OSIRIS-REx as it transitioned from detailed survey uh, going out five kilometers from the asteroid Bennu in those uh, orange and green peaks uh, and down into a nice circular one kilometer orbit in its uh, orbit B phase. And here's just a quick screenshot of those uh, 3D graphics. Uh, so this, uh, is just like STK or GMAT, you can pan and zoom and scroll around, turning on and off planets and uh, uh, instruments. The difference is if you look in the upper left hand corner, uh, this isn't some desktop utility, it's Firefox. Uh, so you don't need to worry about installing something like STK. STK is not running under the hood in here. This is a completely custom built utility uh, from first principles. So no weird dependencies with this. And that image uh, simulation we're talking about, uh, thanks to some great work from uh, Chris Becker, 
we're able to show on the left hand side that is the actual image collected by MapCam on the 28th of May uh, with the MapCam imager. And on the right, using the reconstructed kernel set from NAIF, uh, we passed that through our double precision uh, ray tracer. Uh, and except for the fact that NAIF doesn't know about surface maps, uh, they are the exact same image. And so things like surface maps where uh, albedo effects or whatnot may be included are one of the things we're working on uh, with that science cyber going on right now. And to reiterate, this is all based on an API. So we are hosting this on AWS. Over on AWS, every Spaceline mission will have a thousand cores. Each API uh, will be on a single core while it runs. We have an automatic backup system that is happening very frequently. Uh, and every now and then you hear about, say, for example, oh, AWS East 2 went down and all of a sudden my toaster doesn't work anymore. That's not the case with how we've architected this. There is a failover system. So if the uh, we're based off of their Oregon data center and if our watchdog detects an issue with that center, there's going, we're going to spin you up on a backup on the other coast and take you to one of the other AWS facilities. So downtime uh, will be extremely minimal uh, with this. And so everything is secure. We are ITAR and EAR compliant by putting this in the AWS Gov Cloud. Uh, and we are able to make use of a number of uh, specialized technologies that just streamline a lot of things. And we've kind of seen uh, this type of slide a lot today of there are more missions than ever. Uh, spacecraft are becoming easier to launch as we see CubeSat. So we went from Fuse of 1999 technology to a spare, uh, try to take it. I'm gonna say it the way I've been saying it and Carlos will yell at me later, the Aspera mission uh, fitting into a small SAT package. And like we said, there are newer, younger PIs all the time who haven't had to deal with the life cycle of these bigger NASA missions like OSIRIS-REx or MRO. And so uh, we want to take the lessons we learned on one of those missions and kind of democratize it and package it up in a way that anyone would be able to access it. Um, and we're hoping things like this will help reduce risk and make these uh, systems more accessible uh, to mission teams in the future without having to spin up STK and hire their own STK experts. And in addition to this, uh, one of the things we're providing for Aspera, for example, is a, a custom ground data system. This is built on top of Spaceline. So not only is there the Spaceline out of the box, but can be customized to meet mission specific needs. Uh, and again, uh, this is making use of our 100% ITAR EAR compliance with AWS on their uh, cloud architecture. And one thing we have been uh, providing is just um, feasibility analysis for different mission concepts. I've uh, seen a number of uh, groups presenting today uh, that we had helped out with either uh, orbit design or feasibility analysis. Here on the left, you see a timeline of accessibility of different uh, targets of interest for the Aspera mission back from their uh, uh, pioneers proposal. On the right is an example of uh, celestial coverage where the colors are denoting a month of data acquisition to show uh, that over the course of a year, they were going to get 100% coverage or more like 95% coverage of the night sky over a year uh, science mission. And so these are the options that uh, Sending No Technology provides to you. Spaceline could be something we sell you directly out of the box. Uh, the ground data system and ConOps feasibility analysis are a little bit of a more uh, engineering as a service. Um, but we have uh, felt very at home at, with the UIT, uh, with the Arizona Space Institute. And uh, thank you for the missions that have reached out to us so far. And we hope to help the rest of uh, your missions.
questions. Uh, the question for folks on the Zoom is, are we going directly to the NAFE FTP to download kernels? And so uh, we have a pipeline to there if you want to import kernels from uh, the NAFE FTP directly. Uh, and so you can just drop a, you can take a kernel list, uh, your text meta kernel, paste that link into a text field on our website, and we'll go and sort out which ones already exist on NAIF and bring those into your mission. However, you can also just upload a kernel directly from your disk. So if you, do, if you created a kernel that NAIF doesn't know about yet, you can upload it to Spaceline. Well, we hope to uh, help those folks uh, with this. And the fact is because the kernels all exist on the server, uh, if you want to work with them, you don't need to download them anymore. You don't uh, need to uh, read all of the detailed documentation. Uh, but, oh, sorry. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you see someone uh, probably me is going to make a SPK easy read uh, that easy R stands for easy read. You can blame NAFE for that uh, nomenclature. Uh, but if you were to click on that little icon on the right, it will take you to the NAFE website for that explicit function. So their documentation is built into our documentation. We're not going to try to interpret what uh, the folks at NAFE have already done, uh, and it will essentially be a through line. Um, but of course, NAFE, uh, spice kernels are, you know, still a little bit complicated. And so by things like this and uh, allowing you to conduct the analysis to get charts like that directly on the website, our hope is to make working with spice kernels just more accessible. Uh, are we going to make it perfectly easy? I don't know if that's ever going to be 100% possible, but we want to lower that barrier of entry as much as possible. All right, thank you very much, everyone.